the entire pandemic, I likened myself to the pearl because the pearl inside an oyster is being refined. Hey everyone, welcome to new podcast series of Here Quiz Stories, Stronger Together Amidst Adversities in Southeast Asia, brought to you by Came Out of the Closet and Asian Sogi Carcass. Hey everyone, this is Ryan and I'm the director of ASEAN Soji Caucus. Thank you so much for joining us in this together with Come Out of the Closet and also featuring one of our friends versus uh, who's a, a very amazing transgender artist from the Philippines. Uh, this made available both in our Spotify account as well as in YouTube. It's intended really to bring so much space for LGBTI voices from Southeast Asia to be heard to share our stories and also to find out how folks like us will be able to work together in transforming the ASEAN region. So for I think for this episode featuring Versus, we'll be having a conversation around how do we connect in the time of pandemic? How, I mean, we are all locked up in our different spaces and, um, you know, COVID is still a problem that many countries in Southeast Asia do face, but how can we as activists form connections, work together, converse, and really work in, in changing the region. So maybe Versus and, our, and, and the rest of the gang will be able to share some ideas as we go along with this episode. Thank you, Ryan, for your opening remarks. Today is the first episode of the series. Us, Farah, Proud and Reese will be discussing the topic around Stronger Together as a Queer Community in the Time of Pandemic in Southeast Asia with our podcast guest, speaker, Versus, from the Philippines. We're so happy to have you here. Yay! Hi! Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Mr. Ryan. Hi, Thank Versus. Thank you for those wonderful introductions for the show tonight. Uh, I'm oh. ready for the show. Uh, Tell us and our listeners about yourself. My name is Versus, and I am the Pearl Majesty and the Queen of the City. Um... Mm. The entire pandemic, I likened myself to the pearl because the pearl inside an oyster is being refined and the oyster is my world. Yes. My surrounding was really hard because like, you know, everybody, it's a pandemic going on and whatnot, but it, it's suffering in the, uh, in the misery, I found my beauty. So I called myself the pearl majesty. And I've always been the queen of the city. Um, ASEAN knows that I'm the queen of the city because I am also a, a performer, a live performer, a dancer. Um, I'm also a director so, and, a, and a script writer. So, yeah, and I, I do I do cinematography in all my videos, and then I edit videos too. So uh, I'm on one, and I can cook. That's why I am a big woman. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Let's get the question started. So, are you ready versus for our questions? I am so fucking ready. Let's go. Question. In your perspective, how has COVID-19 impacted the queer community to navigate in or through society, which includes family, friends, colleagues, and or anyone? It was already hard before COVID-19 uh, struck. But then... Miss Rona, you know, all of a sudden actually came into the scene and then she's like, oh. girl, I'm going to try and do something with society. And, and then queer people got like the worst. Uh, I, I, I think they got affected the worst. Like we, we did because for three years, I have not had, had any work at all, like a stable work. Like my work includes me freelancing and like, you know, like uh, grinding on my own. In the gig economy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially in the Philippines. Like the entertainment industry in the Philippines shut down, I know. But then there was no, no backup, you know, because like uh, no artist management uh, wanted to sign me because I was a, a transgender woman. Oh, okay. So it was like really hard. Yeah, so it was hard to get like the funding for my art, and then it's hard to get like an everyday. Uh, it's hard to make ends meet every day. So I had to. Uh, good thing I'm really blessed that I have the in in my room, and this is my closet because we came out of the closet. <laughs> Versus, what's in your closet? What's in my we closet? A bunch of men I've dated in the past. Oh, yeah. whoa! Yeah. They're still alive, though. 
I love it. Next question. How do you connect and be in solidarity with other queer folks amidst the pandemic? Are there any examples that you can share with us? Yes, totally. This is when the internet comes into play. Because mm. we have Instagram, we have TikTok, we have Twitter, we have Facebook, we have all social media. So that I actually built majority of my fan base through the internet, through YouTube, to Twitter. And I, I kid you not, like the, the we we predominate the internet. Total like they really do. So you just gotta find your own flock, and you have to not be shy in approaching uh, people. Because for me, strangers are just friends you haven't met. I, I got that. So every person that you meet is actually a friend in my eyes that I haven't got to know better. So I think I need uh, what I wanted to tell the viewers here is that don't be shy. Reach out to people because we're all people here. You know, like even if we have like different strengths, we have different talents and, and all that. Don't be uh, nervous in approaching others because the reason we are a community is that we accept each other's flaws, we accept each other's love, and I think when we do accept each other in everything, it's going to be a peaceful community. So yeah, thank you for that wonderful question. We've heard your music. How many followers and fans do you have? So basically, I have like a thousand already. I, I think. I mean, in, on Instagram, I have six hundred plus, and then on Facebook, I got like a thousand four hundred friends that really support me. So it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm building it. Like I, I want to win the fucking Grammy award. So. I'm one of your fans. We subscribe to your Spotify. I'm actually so happy that you you appreciate the songs because I created everything on all my own. Do you do them during the pandemic? No, I've been doing this since uh, 2012. Ooh, I I've been in the music industry for like a long time now. Um, learning how to produce on my own, learning how to play an instrument. I I started singing and performing in front of people when I was two years old. So like that came into play. I started writing songs at seven years old, and I never stopped ever, uh, ever since. Like I, I just did it, did it, did it, and so everything that you're hearing on Spotify, I did it all by myself. And then there are other songs that are collaborations with my friends who helped me create the track. So it was a collaboration. And another plus, I am collaborating with a lot of queer people too when it comes to producing. So.、Um, It's actually helpful that Gmail and all the internet、uh, exchanges are actually possible because we we are able to collaborate and finish songs so we could release a music story. I'm actually proud of you, you know. I wanted to ask you about your song lyrics. Are they based on real life experiences? I would love to thank every teacher, every liter- literature teacher that I've literally had. Like growing up until university. So you ask me, like, where have I been?、Um, well, I wanted before I came out of the of the you know came out of the closet and into the music world, I had to make sure that I I know what I'm doing. You know, like, why am I doing this? Why am I? Why do I want to be famous? Why do I want to be successful? Why do I want to create music? That hey. Like there, I love songs. I love music and all that stuff. But like, music isn't just about love or romance. Like music is about revolution. Music is about innovation. Music is about fashion, right? A lot of queer artists and their work really come from their struggles. You know, based on queer phobia, transphobia, homophobia, a lot of this kind of issue. For all of you, like because、um, same-sex marriage isn't legal in all the countries in the world, right? And then in Muslim-dominated countries, like、mm. America, it, it's actually、uh, outlawed, like being homosexual, right? Like it's punishable by death. I think by Sharia law. Stuff, you know,、uh, and I'm, I made myself clear from the very start. You can try it, like in my lyrics. You know, I have, I have experienced trans misogyny. I have experienced misogyny. So I wanted to amplify love in all my songs because love、yes. will always win in the end. Talking about love, I always remember this line: "Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy."
This brings me to the next question. We noticed you have released your own music on Spotify. Does it have to do with your willpower to empower other LGBTQIA plus folks? Or that's the way you shine during the pandemic? Totally. Um, okay, the first question, I'm going to answer that now. Mm. Yes, I've always made music not just for everybody, but specifically for queer people, for LGBTQ plus people. Because we are always uh shoehorn to the side if you got me like mm. you're always pushed to the side that we're as if we're not important as if our stories don't matter just to just to, to have uh the straight be in favor. i mean i'm a i'm a straight transgender woman but like when i when i say straight more like the uh that's the gender you know like the natural like as they said natural i don't even think it's natural i just think that you know it's always about the men always about them 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 them, them. I wanted to highlight and showcase what it is to be queer, not just in the world, but how it is to be a queer, uh, a color, a person who is also queer in Southeast Asia. You know, in, in a place where not a lot of people know much about it. And I wanted to translate that to the Western world. I know that the Western world is aggressive. And because, like, the thing is, uh, when people from the East see something from the West, they get inspired. And then vice versa also happens. So, yeah, like, the song are definitely for, uh, uh, for empowering LGBTQ LGBT people because like, when I was a child, I couldn't find like a transgender yes. icon, right? I, growing up, yep. I couldn't find like LGBTQ plus person to look up to because like when I, well, when I was growing up, I was taught that I was a sin, that I was somebody that should die, that I was somebody that you know, that, that, that shouldn't exist because it was a sin in, in God's eyes. And I'm like, I'm still fucking alive and those fucking bitches are dead. So that fucking, um, <laughs> I'm alive. The Philippines is strictly cattle. And the thing is, I didn't, I, I want to thank my family first because uh, my family might be religious, but they're, they're very liberal. You know, like um, my parents, accepted me the first time like I, I've said I'm a woman and it's the first time I said I'm attracted to men and that I'll marry a husband they're like oh my gosh because I'm the eldest uh, child in the family and then I, I said that to my grandparents and they were like we were just waiting for you to come out of the closet oh here you are like oh, they buy hello, me us out. makeup <laughs> yeah they buy me makeup they buy me um, clothes and so I know that I'm extremely grateful for that and I wanted to share that with all the queer people because I know that there are like a lot of queer people who are homeless who are like told that they're not good enough and that that's why they were made to leave home. I wanted to do my music. I wanted to tell them that, hey, you have a home with me. You belong here with me and mm. you are beautiful. You are great. And we might not be like, you know, there, there will be flaws with humanity. But mm. what matters is choose kindness and choose to be good. So, and, and then the next question that was asked me, like, how do you shine in the pandemic? Well, part of the reason why I keep on going is that I am angry with how the world is regarding mm. LGBT people. I'm legitimately angry because I get news all the time that there are like LGBT plus people that are shaved, bald, that are raped, that are beaten to death. And you know, and then it's like we have to take a backseat. Oh, uh, as if we're not important. You know, like that. It's always like about this, about that. And you know what? Fuck that. You know, the reason why I, I, I wanted to shine in the pandemic because I wanted to be the beacon of, of LGBT, LGBT plus people, especially in the Saudi people. That you know, we grew up in a strictly religious place where it's very very heteronormative there's like no uh non-binary people don't exist asexual people don't exist aromantic people like you know like they, they, the definition of normal that they um that they uh that they they think is just like a marriage between a man and a woman and and, and you know like a typical one and i grew up with that i grew up where in schools that are catholics that are so strict about that they make fun of transgender people they make fun of gay people lesbians uh even bisexuals calling them confused and whatnot so i grew up in that environment i grew up in violence basically because i was mentally physically and emotionally abused 
by the people surrounding me, not my family, but like the people outside. It, but I think my saving grace would be that my home life is basically where I'm liberated, where I can talk, you know, like I can talk freely. So that taught me how to fight back and how to win, how to win in those battles. And now it's my turn. Somebody, uh, you know, I, I, I was given a talent. I was given many talents to create something out of nothing. So it, it is my calling to uh, to share it with the world, not just with queer people, but with everybody that ever felt like they're powerless. I wanted to know that they're not powerless. May they be straight, may they be gay, or, or you know, like for all, but especially to the LGBTQ plus youth. I want them to, to, to have an LGBTQ plus icon to look up to that, hey, she, if she, she made it, she's still alive then we can do it you know like uh, i wanted to do that you're doing that actually by setting the path you talking about the violence well in southeast asia we grew up with the same kind of violence so whatever we are doing we do look up to you and respect you music is one way to make things better and make oppression bearable that was our last question for verses thanks to everyone for listening to our podcast Thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you. Oh, yes. You came out of the closet. I love you. And a shout out to Nini, who's watching from the Philippines. Yes, Nini. Okay, so I am on Spotify, iTunes, Mm -hmm. Apple Music, YouTube. So Mm -hmm. I am the first result from Spotify. If you search versus uh, the pink hair will appear, you'd know it. And then with the pearl crown, that's going to be me. The pearl majesty. uh, Yes. And I have my... um, my newest single, Seasons, is out now, and I have a new single on the horizon. Stay tuned. Yay! Yay. Yay. It's a collaboration with my great friends in New York, Chrissy Nova. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to catch Versus on Spotify with her amazing singing and music. And she is on Facebook and Instagram too. Catch her on Instagram at Versus Official 16. Thank you for listening. Follow us on Instagram at Came Out of the Closet IG and Asian Sugi Caucus. Catch the video on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Stay tuned for our next episode.